So it's Tuesday, and that means it's No Filter Tuesday. And this guest today is a special one. I first met her in the 90s. And I mean, she was already a star, but always very humble, very down to earth, very connected to the earth. And she was always and already was a fashion icon. Every designer wanted to dress her. That I know because I used to see her name <laughs> when I used to go to my fittings. And I mean, the world got to know her as an incredible actress, an Oscar winning actress, a Golden Globe winning actress, an Emmy winning actress. And now she's changed that role. She's still an actress, but you see her more in action films. But more than that, what she's really caring about today is the world, the environment, what we eat, how we take care of ourselves, and what keeps us in the realm of well-being. She is the CEO of the highly successful brand, Goop. You know who I'm talking about now? She has redefined women's health to another level. She keeps us updated on what to take, what not to take, what keeps us ticking in the healthiest level and way. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome no other, the one and only Gwyneth Paltrow. Hi, Gwyneth! Oh my gosh, I'm sweating from that beautiful introduction. It's that, thank you. I get, I get so embarrassed and that was very beautiful, thank you. Well, you definitely do keep us enthralled and in what we need to be taking. And I think more than ever, we wanna know what is it we need to be taken to, to keep to um, take care of ourselves during this challenge in time to yeah. keep our mind our body yeah it's definitely spirit. been a crazy time and i think it's been wonderful to actually see how many people have become curious about how to take better care of themselves how to feel you know more balanced mentally spiritually emotionally you know i think a lot of people have this has forced so many of us to be quiet and introspective and to maybe tune into our bodies in a way that we ha haven't normally when we're flying all over the place mm -hmm. and so busy. So I think it's, I think we'll look back and one of the silver linings of this time might be that we all tuned in a little bit and, and, mm -hmm. and started to take, you know, or even flirt with the idea of how to take care of ourselves better. Yeah. Cause I, you said two words, forced us, and flirting with the idea because so many of us just keep on running like as if we're on Duracell batteries. Yeah. And that's just not going to last. Yeah. It's, it's going to catch up one day. And we we've we've you know come to live in this culture where it's like cool to work yourself to death and cool to be exhausted and people I think people wear it like a badge of honor. I know I certainly did like oh I'm so exhausted. I'm doing so much and I'm running all around and when this all started, I just thought, is this really the way that our bodies are meant to be? Are we supposed to be driving ourselves this hard? And mm. I just don't think I'll go back to that way of living again. I don't know about you, but I'm loving, you know, having, being more sedentary and being more quiet. I mean, what I am loving is absolutely having the time to take care of oneself. Mm -hmm. I love that when I do go somewhere, when I am going to travel, I'm staying put for a much more longer time than I would have before. It's not days, mm -hmm. it's months. And so it's hard to keep me in one particular place, but, but I mean, <laughs> I feel like I'm now on the African continent, which I miss so much when I was in lockdown in New York. Not that I don't love New York, I love New York City and I always will. I just suddenly, you just start to think about is where is it that you find that peace? Yeah. And I seem to find that peace on this continent. So there was, you know, there was a lot of missing. And I was on your part of the world too. 
You were out here in Los Angeles? I was in Los Angeles too. And this, you mean, LA has that health kick vibe to it too, which is great. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. I think for me, you know, and I'm obviously like a diehard New Yorker who left and moved out, you know, I first to London for many years and, and now in Los Angeles. I but remember when you were in London. It, it's, I remember when you lived. I was, I was glad that I'm living in a city right now where during COVID it's been, we, it was so easy to be outside all winter long. My gosh, I, you know, I thought about all my friends in New York and my mom in New York, you know, and everybody kind of inside and with that brutal cold, I, I've, I've never felt so lucky to live anywhere than Los Angeles in this past, you know, when COVID was happening in the cold. But it's so funny you say that because it's like, even though I have, I'm able to go outside in New York up on my roof, I was so petrified because <laughs> nobody knew in March and April what was really going on. <laughs> so it was like, just stay inside because it don't go outside because don't even open the window. And there was so much bits of information yeah. that I just thought, well, I better not go outside. So I never passed the door, the threshold. How, for how it's, long? I never passed the threshold for three and a half months. You're kidding. <laughs> what did you do inside all the time? <laughs> oh, I was so busy. <laughs> I was busy. Even if I was making my bath, that was a, that was a thing because I got into this thing with putting um, salts, but then putting apple cider and like trying to just clean the body. I mean, I was just, I was just making up concoctions and, <laughs> you know, learning how to make my own um, uh, cakes, um, what's, uh, cupcakes where the frosting wouldn't stand up for even one hour. <laughs> it's like, so I'd be like, I'd show them on my Instagram and I'd be like, listen, and I'm like, they're not going to eat all those. I'm like, of course I'm going to eat them. Who else is going to eat them? <laughs> oh my God. But it was fun. I just, I enjoyed it. Were you I mean, quarantining by yourself? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Did people come over or did no, that? Break no, 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 yeah. no. The only, per <laughs> the only person that could come in or could come to my door was my beloved Donald, who works for me. That's it. And it, and it was a whole clean down wow. of the packages and a spraying and then it could, and gloves, and then it could come in. I mean, no boxes coming in the door. Wow. But I've been like that for a minute with the boxes and the shoes, because I kind of learned that culture in Japan and Russia. Don't right. wear the shoes inside, it brings bad energy. I believe that. I'm the same. I, I always ask people to take shoes off. <laughs> and how do people react? Well, it's interesting, you know, because I started to do it when I, I had a, a townhouse in New York City in the village many years ago. It was my, my first little house that I bought. And it it occurred to me because, you know, you're coming off the sidewalk, up a few steps and onto someone's carpet. And, you know, would you walk barefoot on the, you know, I think no. about the level of filth and bacteria on a New York <laughs> City street just being <laughs> wrecked all the way through your house. So. I said, I started doing it then. And then I only had one friend who's really pissed off about it. I'm not friends with this person anymore. They were really <laughs> not <laughs> happy with it. But everybody else was like, yeah, that makes sense. You know, as yes. you said, energetically, that from a bacterial perspective, like it makes absolutely. sense. Absolutely. Right? Leave yeah, your shoes absolutely the there with you. So now, is that when I met you when you? Because we met in the 90s. Do you remember when we first met? We're going to go oh my to the God. beginning here. I met you so many years ago. I'm trying to think. I'm, I, it's so long ago that I'm trying to remember which time was the first time. But, you know, I grew up reading Vogue and being so obsessed with you and that your whole little cohort. And I was like, because... I think you guys are just like a year or two older than me, but that's just enough where I was still in high school when you were all like superstars. And I remember meeting you for the first or one of the first times and just that I had never like, I, you don't know this because you're you and you're in your own body. But like when you see you in person for the first time, it is like, it, it's incredible. The, the, the height, the radiance, 
the gorgeousness. It's like, oh my God. I was like, this person is not real. Like I cannot even believe. So I used to see you at various fashion things and various soirees and fashion shows and and I it's remember, I remember when I first I remember because <laughs> it was we I first got to meet you properly at the Bowery Bar. Oh remember the Bowery God. Bar? Of course. That was yeah. fun. And you were with your lovely friend Sandra Bullock. Oh my God, how funny. You were with Sandra Bullock. The two I wonder of you were together. Drink, drinking away. No, you came in. I mean, <laughs> we were in a bit of a, there was a bit of chaos going on around us. We had someone in a bit of chaos, but you came and you kind of brought calm. And I think you actually felt compassion to the person, which is what we all did too. And, um, oh my oh, God, I cool. remember that. I remember we this. Were cool. Yes, we were trying to stop. We were trying to stop another designer from calling the police on this poor other person, which didn't need to happen. So you did bring you brought calmness to the situation. Oh my God, that's right. Wasn't the world so small then, Gwyneth? It was, and you know, no Twitter, no no cell phones. We could, we could, we had freedom, and it, you know, I. I it's funny. I sometimes I look at my kids and especially my daughter who's 16 and she, uh, they are so entrenched in their phone and social media and where their friends are and what everybody else is doing. And I think it's such a burden for them. I, I can't imagine having that, especially when I was in the nineties, when I was getting into all kinds of trouble, like luckily nobody had their I know. I was, I was able to maintain my squeaky clean image because nobody had a camera. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, I mean, I mean, we wanted to be connected, but we, you know, it's a it's a catch twenty two. Yeah. You know, we wanted that connection. We wanted to go into this, jump into this, like. But mm -hmm. then we had we lost a part of ourselves. Let's discuss this last birthday picture because. This lady's body is insane. Oh. That but no, I loved it. I had to do a double take when it, <laughs> I was like, oh. what, is that is that did Gwyneth put that picture up or did somebody put that picture up? And I, but your body, you really do work to maintain your body. And I mean, I've seen you at events and in different parts of the world where you are consistently on your game in your training, the discipline. Can you tell yeah. us about yeah. that? You know, it's funny. I think I started, I, I found yoga when I was, I don't know, I want to say about 25 or so. And the, the the yoga practice that I found was a daily, oh, my hair has gone all crazy. Sorry about that. Uh, my hair, um, <laughs> it, it was an Ashtanga yoga practice, which is a practice that you're meant to do six days a week. So, and it was kind of the first exercise I ever found, but that six days was really a part of the thing. It, it wasn't like you could, if you were doing it, you, you couldn't really do it every other day or whatever. So my first six days straight, six days a week. And so my entree into exercise and feeling, getting strong and feeling strong was a consistent daily thing. And, you know, even when I stopped doing that particular kind of yoga, because I got hugely pregnant and that was, it was really hard to do and et cetera. And I still do yoga, but different kinds. I, the benefits of having exercised every day or most days of the week um, made me feel so good and made me feel like I'm also a person. I, I think I really, I process things as I move. I'm very energetically sensitive. And so I feel like things like kind of stick in my body. And when I move, if I walk yeah. or if I hike, you know, or dance mm -hmm. or do yoga, so like not to be stagnant, not to, you know, to yes. get, yeah. No, so I, I, do, I totally agree with you on that. It's like part of my mental and spiritual wellness as much as my physical wellness, you know, like moving every day. So, and now that I'm, you know, 48, I don't, I don't like kill myself with super high intensity stuff every day. Like sometimes, sometimes I just take a walk and that's my exercise, but I breathe and I move mm -hmm. or, you know, I I'll 
put over COVID, you know, I've been doing, I found so many great workouts online. I do yoga online, or I do this great thing called the class by Taryn Toomey. I do my Tracy Anderson online. That's what I was going to ask you. Cause I, I know you also were connected with Tracy Anderson and I was a huge into Tracy Anderson. And I was like, bring it to Russia. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Nice. Do you remember? Oh yeah, totally. And, um, I mean, what I loved about that is I come from a dance background, classical ballet and jazz. So I felt like I understood. I just loved the whole discipline of that. It was nice yeah. to, I can't do the same thing every day. I have to change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel that way too. And I think the most important lesson there is just to know yourself and know what you're capable of and not and know that if you want to do different things, you should just explore whatever, you know, as long as you're feeling like you're doing something that's working for you. And so I do too now. I mix it up all the time and I, I do all up. kinds of different things. Yeah. I tell you, I was in... Um I was in China last year, no, 2019. <laughs> 2019. Can we say it? I was in China. I have Chinese blood. I'm not going there. And basically, um, um, I went. I couldn't sleep. I had terrible jet lag. So I woke up and I was like, you know, I want to go to the park. And do, I see these women doing their Tai Chi. I want to go. And I don't know if I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just going to go and move with them. It doesn't matter. It's just that you know the movement just moving your body you yeah. know because i see these women of such vitality mm -hmm. and they're older women gwyneth and i'm yeah. like no no no. i want i want to get out there i want to get some of what they're what they've got going and i really enjoyed this um tai chi because i think you know i thought it was going to be easy but it's so again disciplined you gotta hold everything it's gonna be slow moving but i loved it yeah mentally i loved it that's a beautiful practice because it's it's like a meditation as well. You know, it's 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 very meditative. I haven't done a lot of it, but it's beautiful. I bet you'd like that one. So then let's get back to the birthday picture. So you decided uh, to put out this birthday picture. We're not letting you get a hook. What made you decide to put out this birthday picture on Okay. Your, this is the 48th, right? Yes. I'll tell you the truth. So my marketing team at Goop, we were launching this fantastic new body butter. And we have this line. It's one of our kind of little lines is uh, it's called Goop Jeans. And we don't like to say anti-aging because there's nothing wrong with aging. And I love aging and it's a part of life. But it's, um, but it's, it's, it really helps with those parts of aging that some of us find difficult, like hydration, mm -hmm. suppleness, fine lines and wrinkles, whatever. So we made this incredible body butter and our head of marketing was like, I think you should post a, a nude selfie on your birthday in support of this body butter launch. And I thought she was pretty crazy, but <laughs> I, I ended up doing it, but you know, it was so ridiculous. Me trying to get a naked selfie by myself. <laughs> it was so ridiculous. So, did, I mean, so how did you do? You had a stick in front of you. You had it on a timer? I did the timer thing. So I like put it on, <laughs> I put it on a little ledge mm -hmm. and, then, and then I did the timer and then it gives you 10 seconds, you know, to like go run into place and get in, get in position. And then I, I took a few and most of them were really bad. And the I think the one I posted wasn't so great either. But at that point, I was so no, sick. No, it was do great. It. great. If only I had the guts to do that. It was amazing. Your body's amazing. Oh, Your thanks. body is amazing. For an old gal. If, if Eddie was going to show it, you should be showing it. <laughs> I was born in California. And then I was raised kind of back and forth between Los Angeles and New York City. Um, and I did some of schooling here, some there, back and forth. And then we moved to New York permanently when I was 11. But we all we kept our house out here and we, we always used to come back. So I really feel like I'm both a California girl through and through and a total New York City girl. You know, it's like I'm both. It's weird. And um, and I grew up in a family of artists. You know, my dad made TV shows. He was a writer and and a producer. And my mom is, she's an amazing actor. And so I grew up with a lot of 
creativity and inspiration in the house. My mom was like super feminine and always like playing amazing music and singing and harmonizing and, you know, playing with me with different accents. And she was really, you know, it's like a very vibrant uh, way to grow up and a lot of, you know, artists over for dinner and stuff like that. It was fun. It was really, it was nice. And that's what I was going to say. It must have been a great, hat. like, did you ever know who was going to pop it, pop in with such a artistic mother and father and knowing they must have had so many amazing, colorful friends? Yeah, exactly. You never would know, you know, yeah. sometimes, you know, like, there would be a movie star that would come over or, you know, a TV star or a, a painter or something and, or, you know, the coach of an NFL football team. And it was, it was really cool. My, you know, it, it, fame was different then. It wasn't kind of what it is today. And, um, mm -hmm. and I think, you know, we had less access to our famous people, right? Like today I, I can just look at you on Instagram or look at this person and feel connected or follow you on Twitter. But in those days, you know, famous people seemed mm -hmm. so out of reach. And so it was very cool to get to meet a bunch of the, those kind of people in person. I feel like with you, you've always been very comfortable in your shoes. You're not phased by a huge movie star. I always felt like you were just like, okay, just relaxed and <laughs> in your stride, which is, I mean, back then, I feel like it was something, it's very elegant. You just, you know, you'd see you if you wanted us to know you were there, but you were also reserved and, I don't know, it's very, you have a a comedian-like energy and vibe mm -hmm. where, you know, you wanted us to know you, Gwyneth, you know you're there. If we didn't, which I think is really difficult to do, but you've managed to do it. I think a lot of that also comes from the fact that I, and this is something that I think I've realized later in life, like I actually have not been that comfortable being a public person or being in front of the camera, even though I've done it for so long. You know, there's a part of me that really feels shy and doesn't feel like I'm naturally an extrovert like that. Um, and so I think when you feel me sort of more, uh, or you feel me less in a room, that's kind of my more natural state. And then like, if I have to be, you know, me, then I, mm. I can be that too. You know what I mean? So do you have, when you're actually doing your movies, because you do some huge blockbuster movies. <laughs> yeah. They're big ones. What is, to get you to, because I do, I can see that you'll have shyness, but I think shyness is a plus to have, you know? Okay. How do you get over to, how does it get you over to do that, to get yeah. into that character to? You know, I think because when you're acting, you can, you, you convince yourself that you're somebody else. And so you can inhabit their qualities and you don't have to be yourself in that way. It's not, you don't feel exposed in the same way that you do if you're just yourself, you know, yeah. kind of in the limelight. And, um, yeah. and, I, and I, and I think, you know, I also started doing it so young that I just started and kept going and kept going. And I, I, I went for a long time before I even asked myself, like, do I like this job? Am I comfortable doing this? You know, like, am I, do I want to be an actor? It took me a while to even allow myself to ask myself that question. And when you did. <laughs> it was <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I mean, I remember you once told Oprah that having a family in this business gets you in the door but you have to have talent to stay in the room. Do you still feel that way? I do. I mean, I think, you know, it's changed so much since then. I mean, honestly, I think there are so many people now who are able to, it's a different currency, right? It's like, uh, you know, my husband now, he makes television shows and, you know, when they're talking about casting a, a young kid for this and that, like the, the network will look at how many Instagram followers the kid has, you know? So mm -hmm. 
that was I so think I did something of your husband's one of his productions actually and I loved it. Oh yes, I you did. did. I did um American Horror Story. That's, that that's was a, awesome. That's, that's incredible. That's just it was amazing experience. Loved it. That was so cool. That was amazing. So they look at followers now. Yeah, they want yeah, they want to know like, oh, is this going to help us broaden our reach, you know, if we cast this kid. So I think now people are far more interested, you know, they don't really, it doesn't really matter if you come from, you know, a well-known parent. It's like, do you have a following? Do people so the know? The talent doesn't matter anymore is what you're saying. I think it does, but I'm saying in terms of the getting in the door part, I think mm -hmm. if you have, you know, a, a presence on social media, which is so crazy to me, like coming from the generation that I came from, but also, you know, these kids who are super I'm successful. I'm using my group. Oh, good. I'm, I'm going to use, I'm using what, my do you, group. what do you think? I'm using my clear goop. My lips were dry, so I had to put it. So, do you like it? Very, very creamy, right? And buttery. Mm. And, I, and you know what? And you go to bed and you still wake up with it because <laughs> you know, sometimes you go to bed, you put on a lips, a lip chaps or something to protect your lips. You wake, they go off in an hour. At least yeah. with this, you wake up, your, your lips still feel. Protected. And I'm needing it right now, Gwyneth, because I gave up smoking. And it's you did not. I did. I am Day shocked. <laughs> you were the last New holdout. New Year's resolution. <laughs> oh, my God. When did you stop? New Year's Eve. I said, okay, that's yeah. it. How is it? Drinking lots of water all the time. That's mm -hmm. good. How do you feel? Do you feel like you're dying for a cigarette or is it passing? No, but I know like what you said earlier in putting your energy in different things. Right. That's right. what I got to do. Yeah. So I've been here on the coast, which is great. Every afternoon I leave and I go swim in the ocean for an hour or two and I just sit in the ocean and it's helping to clean up. Because you know, it takes 21 days to get the nicotine out of your system. Yeah. I remember when I quit smoking, I was so fixated on, oh my God, okay, now it's been four days, it's been five days. And then I realized that that if I was going to count how long it had been since I had a cigarette, that I was still a smoker. Like I was still in the mentality of someone who smoked. Yeah. So I tried to be like, okay, I'm going to pretend I never smoked. It's irrelevant to me. Yeah. But it does take a long time to get that nicotine out of the body it takes a minute it takes three weeks to get the nicotine out but i'm doing that i'm just not trying to measure the days i'm just trying to just it gets not through. it never happened it never we never we never met <laughs> <laughs> so our mutual friend derek told me you'd have a good answer to this one okay. what does it take to because you're not saying you're not going to act again but what would make you go, is there a particular role that would make you go right back into the business? Is there a role that you've always wanted to play that they haven't given to you yet or you're going to create for yourself? Oh, Der you know, Derek once heard me answer this question where someone said, what, what is it, what is it going to take to get you acting again? And I said, oh, I have to be fucking the writer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's sort of it like if my husband writes something and he wants me to do it i'll do it but you know right now and and you know you, i can never say never and no. there are a few i would like to go back on stage one day i really loved doing theater theater is there's something about theater that is just exhilarating it's scary though yeah. I mean, I only ever did vagina monologues and I was scared to bits every night. Like, it's scary. It is. Yeah. It is. But it, as you say, it's so exhilarating and it's really the actor's medium, right? It's like you're on stage, you're in control of your performance. Um, and it's the energy between you and the audience yeah. that you feel that nobody can take that, replace that and tell you anything. That's you true. felt it, they feel it. What have you felt from your acting that has been like the most rewarding for you? Definitely the character thing. I mean, Lee Daniels is someone that can, and, and Ryan that has been able to get me to, but I just love being like, 
You know, everyone always made you feel like, oh, because you're a model, you cannot look anything like you. You have to be erased. And da, 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 da. Yes, I'm willing to go that hot. But I mean, I'm always, I'm at the point where it's like, if something comes along that's right, then great. But I'm not like, running it for after every audition. Do you know what I mean? I'm 50 yeah. years old. I know what I know how hard it is as it is to for women of color or women to have good roles. Period. True. So, you know, it's um but am I willing to show a humor side, make fun of myself? I've never taken myself that seriously. Maybe people think I have, but I never have. And I just as long as it's something that's not like me I right guess that that did get instilled in me so but i don't know what that is <laughs> i don't know what that is and now i'm just like i'm so happy sitting there talking to you it's so it's just so cozy i'm coming out your way soon oh good come, come over way. come have dinner so did you ever think that you would become the ceo of such a company like Goop, because I see that Goop is just going to explode, and you've been hard at it. I was at, I was, I missed something of yours. I wanted to come, and I had to fly. You did something in London at Selfridges, and I wanted to come to that. Um, I mean, you just consistently have been doing this. Yeah, it's been a really interesting process. I mean, it's twelve. I founded it twelve years ago now, which seems twelve crazy to me. I can't believe that. And, uh, you know, every phase of the company has been really different and I've learned so much and I, I never would have thought 15 years ago or that I would have been the CEO of a company that was, you know, actually like a growing company. Um, but it's been incredible. I love it so much. I love my team. I, I, I love putting really good products into the world that, you know, I, it, we, in the company, we say we make clinical skincare, you know, it's clean, but it's clinical. And there's such a need for that. You know, there's no need for women to have to sacrifice results, you know, but have to use, you know, harsh chemicals on their skin or things that really are known to not be good for you. So I, I'm, I'm really aligned with our mission. I love what we're doing and it's really, really hard work, but, but I, I love it. And also you've gotten to know other, I mean, you already knew in fashion, but you've gotten to know other retail brands and other CEOs from other companies, which is great because you also put other people on your platform. Totally. And I love that. I love finding great brands that we can sell on Goop, we can write about, we can amplify their mission. And, you know, I think like when you're, when brands are aligned, you can really help each other reach, you know, people for whom your stuff is really going to resonate. And so that's been amazing. And I've, we've done great collaborations and it's. Right. I was going to talk to you about those. Yeah. And what's one of the great ones that you've loved? the collaborations because you have done some great ones yeah i mean um we did one with cb2 the furniture company which was so great because i love furniture and i got to be a closet furniture designer and come up with this amazing line of things that that were really well made and really well priced and um and i think we were able to introduce goop to a, a whole different audience, you know, it's, audience, and, right. and some of the, the fashion ones are fun and, you know, like they'll tend to be smaller, but we did a really fun one with Proenza. We did a, a workout line. That was great. It's just so, so much fun to talk to these other founders and, and creatives. And I missed that one. That's a great one. It's a good one. Oh, I'll send you yeah. some of the stuff. Proenza, now, yeah. yeah. So now that you are the CEO of a company that makes hundreds of millions of dollars, giving advice, you've got a platform that you can give advice to the reaches without any bounds. What's next, Gwyneth? <laughs> I mean, I feel like this is just, I feel like this is just now really got into another hemisphere. What do you feel? You any know, additions to Goop? 
We are, we actually are working on a few really, uh, a new vertical, I guess I would call it, where we're going to announce it pretty soon, but, and we're starting really small, but we're about to go into a new area that I think makes a lot of sense for us that I'm really excited about. And I can tell you that it's something to do with food, but nothing, but that's it. With the good. <laughs> <laughs> really good because now it's like, I have to redo a whole revaluation of what I'm eating because I thought I was eating the right things, but there's certain times you're supposed to eat certain things. Mm -hmm. And now with the blood type and everything, I feel like I really want to make, I want to be right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And not to like our mutual friend, Cameron Diaz always tells balance, balance, balance. Yes, totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So the name of your newest product line is? The name of the newest product line is Goop Jeans. And then within the Goop Jeans, we've also got the... We've got this beautiful thing that you just... Lip gloss. Lip, the lip balm. Except it's sold out, which is so frustrating. Well, what happens when it sells out? Do you... Are you... Are you the kind of like dot com that's going to give us again in a few months or it's just that's it? No, we're definitely going to give it back. Get it where, you know, we're rushing. We just it did better than we thought. So we didn't order enough, which is, I guess, a good problem to have. But I think it'll be I think it's coming back in March, which is kind of a bummer. But we need it before because I the know. dry season of our lips is now. No, that's what I said. <laughs> But we also have this amazing face oil that just came out. Oh, wow. I love the face oil. And it is so amazing. I have to send what's this in, What's you. the ingredients in that? It's like packed with all kinds of botanicals, but it also has, I can never pronounce the word, but it's natural retinol. So it helps mm -hmm. with skin tone and fine lines and wrinkles. And, and it, blemishes. And yes. It's so good. So that's what we're working on right now, our Goop Jeans launches. So for me, when you say Goop Jeans, I'm looking at it more like Goop DNA. Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so we're getting that clear, folks. It's not Goop Denims, it's Goop <laughs> Jeans. It's in the <laughs> DNA, okay? <laughs> I know, but we have to be clear. I agree. You know, these can you. be misconstrued. <laughs> We also so, make jeans. We also make denim. You do have goop jeans. We do. We do, but we don't call them goop jeans. <laughs> right. We have those two. There's a one diet that I know that our friend of, of ours, we've got so many mutual friends, Brennan. Did you ever do the, the sardine diet? Yes. I like that sardine diet. I did too. Did you do the 10 days or the six days or 10 days? I did it 10 the first time. It made me very alert. Yeah. I actually really love sardines. I didn't have a problem, but the eyes were so white. I know it's wild. It's really, it, that's a good diet. I, I, I really like that one too. And for anybody who's watching, it's not only sardines. You can have no, holes and brown rice. Rice. <laughs> but not, not that much more. It's pretty much sardines, but then, you know, you throw in a few grains of rice and but that that was a good one. I I am perennial. Yes, I like trying new ways of eating because you know I love doing a little cleanse and seeing how my body feels. And it is amazing when you take out caffeine and alcohol and processed sugar and white mm. starches and all that stuff. It's incredible how vibrant you feel and how Big awake difference. and aware. Right? Huge Big difference. I just started a cleanse today, actually. I've, it's a new one that I've never tried before. That's like bone broth and smoothies. Oh, bone broth I've tried, but never to, never those two. Just that's it. So only liquid? That's it. Are they, well, if long? you get really hungry, you can have, I think, a few like sauteed greens and a sweet potato. I think it's, you can do four days, six days, or eight days. So I'm doing six days. Listen, it's the new year. It's good to do a cleanse. I agree. It's good, I, right? I agree. So we have another friend that I have to mention that I absolutely adore, and I know you adore, and that's Alejandro Younger. Yes. The Lean Diet, the Gut Book. 
great author. Alejandro is a friend of Gwyneth and I, and I mean, that diet, that cleanse has also been amazing. Amazing. Oh God. I first did that cleanse, Naomi, when he didn't even, it wasn't even a thing. He was like putting vitamins in a little packet by hand and telling me take this and do that. It was way before it was even a, oh, I love that one. In fact, I was thinking about doing the clean program because I'm, I'm trying to be, I want to do a really, I was so bad this year with pasta and wine and oh but i think it's okay this year last year you mean yeah last year sorry it's okay i feel like it's okay to have everyone had to have a little treat whether it be pasta whether it be chocolate whether it be alcohol let them have it it was a tough challenging year but Gwyneth Paltrow I could sit here because I know that there's some gems you've got to please can you come back and do a part two because Anytime. there's some gems like when you get into your goop food thing which is a surprise that's coming I would love you to come back and talk to me about that because and all of us because this lady knows look at her <laughs> look at her Please, no makeup. Look at her skin. <laughs> she definitely knows some secrets that we need to have and share. <laughs> I'll share away. I will come as, back when I, I definitely will. To you, as, uh, did he ever said to you, share your secrets, Gwyneth? Have <laughs> <laughs> you ever? <laughs> That's what he, my whole thing loves to I share my secrets all the time. That's the whole foundation of Goop. That's the whole part of Goop. I loved having you on No Field today. We loved having you on No Field today. Is there anything that you want to tell us about doing this, you know, delicate, sensitive time that we should be aware that we're not doing? Is there any, like, simple rule of conduct? You know, I would just say one thing that I found for myself was I really recommitted to my meditation practice during COVID, which is something that I used to do every once in a while or if I had time or if I was on a plane and it has been so incredible to wake up every morning and do 20 minutes of meditation. And I think that we have, as you said, when we started, we have all this extra time at home. So to, I think it's wonderful to find something to lean into a little bit that can, you know, help broaden your sense of, um, well-being and, you know, whatever that might be for you, for, for everybody listening. Um, that's what I would say is, is the, is the real gift, you know, just the gift of a little more stillness and silence to figure out what, what is something that you could start doing at home that might make you feel better about, you know, better in your, in your body. You heard it here first. <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow, thank you so much for your yeah. time. Thank it's you so, so much for you. my for my new lip. You're welcome. And I'm going to send you the oil too, because it's so you. good. And let me say something to you. I've got to say something to everyone. This, this lip gloss, Clean Goo, got to me. I don't, I, didn't get, I don't really get many packages delivered in Africa, but <laughs> Goo got through. We I got was through. in shock. <laughs> when I was like, a package has arrived from the United States. I'm like, Really? That's very rare. Are you short for me? They're like, yes. I look at it. I was in shock. So amazing team. Fantastic team. Thank you. (laughs) Who can get to you anywhere? So that's a good, that's what you need. You need to know that. You're so So sweet. thank you, my darling. Thank you so much for your time. And I hope that I can get to see you when I come out west. and Come, come over for dinner. I'll make you a home-cooked meal. I'd love that. All I'd right. love that. With no nightshades. No nightshades. No nightshades. No gluten. <laughs> no, no gluten. gluten. <laughs> I'll make I love you, you so much. I love Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Have a nice afternoon. Love Bye, you. my love. Bye. There's definitely a lot more tips that we need to be getting from Gwyneth. So we need to be checking in with Gwyneth on a regular basis because things are going to be coming out and we need to be abreast we need to be right alongside her, knowing what they are, what to do, how to take care of ourselves. You know I love a well-being. So please don't forget to like this video and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm wishing you 
Happy, happy, happy new year. Welcome to No Filter Tuesdays, if you've never watched it before. This is the first No Filter of 2021. God bless, and may you have an incredible year ahead. We are going to get through this together. Promise. Round girls out.